Hello, my name is Brendan Cowan. I'm the Emergency Management Director here in San Juan County. Uh, and I'm here with a couple of local public health experts uh, and parents. And we're gonna talk through some of the questions and concerns that we're hearing from folks in the community uh, about the Pfizer COVID vaccine and particularly how it relates to, to kids 12 and up, uh, especially the 12 to 15 range who are newly uh, eligible. So I guess if you guys can introduce yourselves, maybe starting with Dr. James and then and then Ellen afterwards. Hi, I'm Frank James. I'm your health officer for the past 30 years, and I'm excited to be here today. Uh, I want to start out just by congratulating your success as a community. There are no deaths, few hospitalizations, and very high immunization rates. We really have a very near achieving community immunity uh, here in the islands. Most of what we do protects ourselves, but most importantly, it protects other people, especially those most vulnerable in our community. And that's the phase that we're in now is how do we protect best the young people in our community from the long-term impacts of COVID? And Frank, can you just talk a little bit about your role in the county and as the health officer and, and kind of your medical practice outside the islands? Well, I do research, I teach, and, and I have a medical practice. I. Uh, uh, have been teaching at the University of Washington for uh, uh, about 30 years as well. And I also have an adjunct professor at Yangming University in Taipei. I do, I'm currently running a, a phase three COVID vaccine trial for Novavax vaccine, a new vaccine. It's about 10 times more immunogenic than the current vaccines. Um, it has much promise, but is not yet approved. Um, so I, I do research in this area as well, separate from my job as a health officer. Um, I've loved coming to the community. I consider it my community. I uh, uh, love to hear from people and uh, very much appreciate the leadership our entire communities brought to this particular uh, risk that we're facing now. Great. Thanks, Frank. And Ellen? Yeah, I'm Ellen Wilcox, and I uh, am the Healthy Communities Manager here at the San Juan County Health and Community Services, or Public Health Department, as many of uh, the community members uh, refer to us. And I've been working in global health and public health for 20 years, uh, including in vaccine research and uh, administration as well. I've been leading the emergency response operations efforts. So everything from surveillance to testing to most recently rolling out our countywide immunizations programs. And I'm like you, Dr. James, very, very grateful and um, uh, proud to be working in this community that really has uh, led the state and the nation in a lot of ways and, and just doing the right thing. And we're here to talk today about uh, how we can continue to do the right thing through uh, immunizations. Great. Uh, you know, as someone who's had the privilege of watching you two and your team work uh, over the last 14 months or so, uh, I just want to kind of say thanks on behalf of the islands uh, for all of the work you've been doing. I know it's uh, it's not easy uh, by any means. Uh, Dr. James, can you just give us a summary of where things are at with approval for a vaccine for adolescents 12 and up, uh, kind of what we can expect going forward? Well, it's literally happening as we speak. Uh, the, uh, the FDA approved it earlier uh, this week. Today, the ACIP, which is the CDC committee that approves vaccines, is considering actively and is approving it as well. There will be a additional step uh, of an, a, a one more review of uh, the Western states have come together, the states along the West Coast, um, where they have a panel of experts that yet again will review the data. So there'll be three major reviews in the past few days. These reviews, of course, have been ongoing for several weeks, and these are the final meetings where those, those final approvals will be given. And the uh, first two of the three have, have already happened. The third is likely to happen later today. Um, the, the, the vaccine is shown to be very safe and very effective in children. And uh, I mean, exceptionally so, about 100% efficacy, uh, uh, very few that aren't protected. And that means uh, effective against hospitalization, against death, and against uh, symptomatic infection. Um, the Pfizer uh, doses for uh, this particular uh, vaccination effort are going to be the same as the other. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine is given in two shots, three weeks apart. It is an mRNA vaccine that's been used for really very extensively since 2020. Um, and, uh, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of doses have been given to, to many people. And I think we sorted through what the challenges are. 
Um, in the trial in kids, there were over 2,000 people um, involved in this 12 to, to 16 year old age range. Uh, they were followed very closely after the immunizations, again, showing 100% efficacy and very few uh, uh, serious complications. The things you do see are local reactions, and they tend to be the things that you see with any vaccine. Soreness and tenderness at the site of injection. Uh, sometimes people might feel a little off. It's very like the adults that have gotten it. They have uh, similar symptoms. Um, uh, worse on, on the, after the second dose than the, than the first, um, but essentially the, uh, the same, or actually as those, that age group that's slightly older than them, the, the 20 and 30 year olds have essentially the identical uh, pattern that was seen in adolescents where they're given in the studies. Um, Great. I mean, I think that's a good launching point for us. And it kind of leads me to Ellen, can you give me just a little bit of information about what the county is planning? Um, you know, it seems like approval is imminent. Uh, what's next? Yeah, it's uh, it's been busy and, and also very exciting times uh, in terms of our county's planning efforts to bring uh, the Pfizer vaccine to the community and ensure that we can actually uh, vac start vaccinating our kids. So we've been working pretty closely with the Department of Health to actually bring the Pfizer vaccine to San Juan County. Uh, not necessarily an easy feat because uh, it, it requires a lot of ultra cold storage and handling. Uh, so we have been able to uh, work through those hurdles, which can be just a little more challenging when you're talking about uh, bringing um, ultra cold vaccine to our islands. Uh, as many people who ride the ferries know, it's it's not always an easy go to get here. Um, but I'm happy to report that we did receive our first shipment of Pfizer vaccine on Monday of this week in anticipation of Pfizer being uh, fully approved and available in our communities. So really a lot of planning efforts are behind the scenes, working with schools, working with resource centers, um, and then working with the Department of Health and our own vaccinating teams to make sure we've got the staffing, the facilities, uh, and the outreach to make this happen as soon as we are able to use the vaccine, which looks like it's going to be within a day or so. Uh, we have uh, vaccine clinics that are going to be rolling out likely as early as uh, Saturday the 15th on Orcas, um, and then rolling into the next few weeks <laughs> on Orcas, Lopez, and San Juan Islands. And Pfizer vaccine will be available for children ages 12 and up. It's going to be prioritized for those kids, but also open to their families. So open to adults to make sure that we're able to use all of that Pfizer vaccine, but really prioritizing that for those kids 12 and up for whom Pfizer is really the only option. And what I'll encourage people to do, we understand that information changes, timelines change, a lot of that's beyond our control. Uh, so we'd ask you to stay tuned to www.sjccovid.com and that will provide up-to-date details and information about how to register your child and your family for vaccine appointments. Perfect, that's great and uh, super encouraging. Um, you know, I think what I'd like to do is just uh, kind of run through some questions and concerns that I think, you know, I've heard and I'm sure you all have heard as well. Um, and get your thoughts on those and, and hopefully begin to answer some of what we're hearing from the community. I'm going to start with a really obvious one, and, and Frank, you touched on this just a minute ago, um, but I'm, I've heard from more than one teenager, what is it going to feel like after I get my shot? Is it going to is it going to hurt? Am I going to feel terrible? Am I going to be able to go to school the next day? And then from parents, you know, is there anything they can do to, to kind of take care of those kids if they're not feeling great? Well, the, the first thing is that with the new needles we use, they're tiny. They're what we call 27 gauge needles. They're 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 uh, so small that some people don't even feel getting the shot. Um, all vaccines, though, have the potential to cause some uncomfortable side effects, having a sore arm, a little achy, some chills, a little bit of fever. Uh, vaccines make us feel sick because they're teaching our bodies how to fight the virus. Um, even though uh, they're no fun, these side effects are a good sign in that everything is working appropriately and your body is learning how to fight these infections. In general, the second shot is more likely to cause discomfort than the first. In general, we expect side effects uh, of the vaccine to be about the same as what we've seen with the older individuals that I mentioned earlier, the, the 20 and 30 year olds. Now, I tell parents to give their kids uh, ibuprofen and plenty of fluids uh, to let their children know that the symptoms will pass. Ibuprofen should not be given or other uh, anti-inflammatory type medications prior to the shot, but can safely be given afterwards. 
um, reassurance that these symptoms are going to pass. Almost all side effects from the immunization are gone within 24 hours and and 100% within three days. If something's lingering, uh, some symptom is lingering longer than three days, they should contact their provider about it because it's probably not related to the vaccine. Um, Again, if if you're not uh, if you're not feeling well, that means that the vaccine is working, and that's that's exactly what we want. Want um, and for both parents and the child, they need the reassurance to know that that that's their sign that in fact it is working. Um, I I uh, do think it uh, wise and prudent for parents and children to plan for a day off after each of the shots, both the child and the parent, as you may be providing some care for them, particularly with a second dose. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, obviously, very few kids enjoy shots. I'm sure there's some out there. Um, but, and there may be side effects, Dr. James, as you just mentioned. So maybe Ellen, you're a parent. Uh, what would you say to a, to a parent or child who's on the fence about getting the, the vaccine? Sure. So I am a parent of two children, uh, one of whom will be eligible this week uh, to receive their first uh, vaccine. And we are getting vaccinated as, as soon as we can. Uh, over the course of this pandemic, and especially very recently, my teams and I have spoken to uh, too many parents whose kids are still fighting the effects of COVID. And I've spoken to far too many healthcare providers who have been treating kids with COVID and who are quite concerned about these kids. Um, I've also been immersed in the science of vaccines for most of my public health career, and, and I feel comfortable with the Pfizer vaccine. As a public health practitioner, I feel very strongly about not advising something that I wouldn't do for my own children and my family, my loved ones. And I will absolutely be getting my kids vaccinated as soon as I can because the benefits far outweigh the risks. I know one of the questions that can come up is, what about my vaccinated child? Uh, ha having a sleepover or spending time inside with an unvaccinated child. And, and what I would say for my child is once vaccinated, we're still going to prioritize being together with other vaccinated kids. Uh, you know, the vaccine isn't 100%. It's very protective. But while the virus activity is still as high as it is, uh, there's still a risk that a vaccinated person could get COVID from an unvaccinated person. And we're just not that far through this pandemic um, to do those activities safely. And really vaccinations are the best protection. And that's and that's how I frame it with my own kids and, and with other parents who are asking me these questions. Great, thanks. Dr. James, anything to add to that? Well, uh, like Ellen, I have, uh, I have children. I have four kids. Uh, three of them are quite old and I have grandkids. Um, my 16 year old uh, became immunized as soon as it was available to him. He got it a little earlier than others because the, I work with an exact tribe and they provided it uh, quite a while ago. When it happened and he got immunized, I got to say it, with, it lifted a weight off my shoulders. I worried about him going out, being with his friends, uh, and it was huge relief to feel that he was really protected. Again, this vaccine is highly, highly effective. Uh, so for me, it was a big deal. My granddaughter was also immunized at the same time. Um, I, I can't wait for my other grandchildren to be immunized as the vaccine becomes available to them. Um, the bottom line is that COVID is a very serious illness. Ellen alluded to the fact that there can be long-term complications of, of COVID, and there definitely are. Uh, it's not just the mortality, but the morbidity that can come with infection that needs to be prevented. Increasingly, there's data that there are long-term consequences, the infection with the virus, and preventing those is very, very important. There are also new variants that can make kids sicker. Um, currently in Bellingham, there were recently 28 people in the hospital, uh, all of them unimmunized, and a number of them in their 20s and 30s in intensive care. This is a very serious illness, both in its acute phases and the potential long-term complications that can be seen. Uh, it has been shown that this particular vaccine has a, a good uh, profile against the variants that are common these days. That's a very important thing. Um, Pfizer is a very good product. Um, we, we don't fully understand the long-term complications of COVID in terms of having what looks like a mild infection, but having significant sometimes drastic impacts on people's lives later on. Um, the infections are, are very, very serious. We know that uh, for uh, people, there are cardiac, there are pulmonary, and there are neurologic complications that have been well-defined, even from mild disease. As a parent, I, I totally empathize with those that are hesitant, but as a physician, 
who treats children with COVID, uh, my very, very best advice is to get your kids vaccinated as soon as you can. Um, Great. That, that's clear. <laughs> I appreciate that from both of you. Um, I mean, this kind of ties into to what you both were just saying, but I know some folks, parents in the community and others are, are wondering, you know, does it really make a difference to get vaccinated, especially if there's still a chance you might catch the disease? Um, maybe some would say, you know, what's the point or why would I do this? Um, I, I think you've touched on this, but maybe Dr. James, could you just highlight that a little bit? Well, the bottom line is the vaccine works. Uh, this far in, we have all sorts of evidence telling us that the more evidence and the more evidence we get, the better we think the vaccines work. They drastically reduce the ri serious risk of COVID infection. They limit one's chances of becoming infected in the first place, and they minimize the risk of transmission in the unlikely event that the vaccination does become, the person does become infected after vaccine. Um, there, there is about a 5% or 1 in 20 risk of that happening, but it, it is a much, it's a, sort of like having a bad cold rather than a serious infection. Um, we're encouraged by, by this recent research that I mentioned that Pfizer, vac vac Pfizer vaccines are effective against the variants as well. In addition, the, the more people that get vaccinated, the less disease there is in our community. One of the reasons we've had such a good record in San Juan County is we have limited community spread. Really, there have only been a couple of times when there are community-based outbreaks. All the others have been stopped in the household in which they came to. That's partly due to all of your great efforts at masking, distancing, and following those rules. Another big chunk of it now is these immunizations. We have well over 85% uh, of our elders immunized. 15% are still vulnerable though. Um, about 70% of our adults have had at least one dose of the vaccine and will likely soon have the second dose. That means 30% are still susceptible. The more we can limit the spread of disease, the more likely we are to get to the other side of this outbreak without having anyone die or be seriously hospitalized. Um, I really, um, it's very important that, um, that all of us participate in that effort. It's really not just doing it for yourself and your child, but for the entire community. Thank you. Great, I appreciate that. Um, you know, Ellen, as a parent, you've got one kid who's going to be vaccinated and one who won't be able to be vaccinated yet. Um, maybe that's a great way just to explain a little bit about some of the decisions you'd make between between the two. And, you know, what would a vaccinated child, what would you feel comfortable with versus an unvaccinated child? Sure. Those are those are good questions. And they're coming up a lot for families. Uh, I would feel very comfortable with my fully vaccinated child having a sleepover or spending indoor time with other vaccinated kids. And I can tell you my 13 year old is counting the days until she can do this again and, and uh, hug her friends. Uh, I would travel with my vaccinated child, even on an airplane. And I would even take them to a sporting event or a restaurant and feel and feel good about doing that uh, with my child and for my child. As long as cases are as common as they are now and likely will be for some time, especially with variants in the in the mix, I would be very careful about putting an unvaccinated child at risk. As we're seeing, these new variants are spreading easier than what we've experienced so far. And I just don't want to be in the position of taking a chance with COVID. Um, clearly, this is my line of work. I'm extra concerned. Um, but really, there's nothing terribly complicated about the situation. COVID is serious, and, and anyone who has seen a friend or a family member struggle uh, with COVID or the, and the effects of COVID over time uh, understands that. And this is uh, something that I think, because our case rates in the islands have been so low, for many islanders, the disease really feels like uh, maybe a more abstract concept. Uh, and we just don't have that firsthand experience that helps guide our decisions. And in a lot of ways, that's a really good thing. But, but I think it's also the time to remind our community and ourselves that this is a disease not to be taken lightly. And, and there is an answer right in front of us in the form of, of vaccinations. Great. Uh, that, that's perfect. Um, you know, we're getting close to the end here, but Ellen, you've been spending a lot of time, obviously, in vaccine clinics here in the islands, helping give shots to islanders. If I'm a parent or I'm a child and I'm heading in to get my first Pfizer shot, what can I expect? What does that process look like? 
It's actually super easy. And one of the most common bits of feedback we get from people uh, who are coming to our vaccine clinics is we we really have done a lot to make this process as, as easy and warm and welcoming as possible. It's actually pretty efficient. Uh, so we'll be strongly encouraging parents to register online in advance. That speeds things up at the site. Uh, but walk-ups are also not a problem and we can accommodate that at the site. We will ask parents to sign a consent form that can be done online when you register ahead. And there might be a short line depending on how many people are getting vaccinated or signed up for a vaccine appointment at the same time. And then a parent and child will sit down with one of our public health nurses. We'll double check information, choose which arm to vaccinate. And then there's a 15 minute waiting area just to keep an eye on everyone before they're cleared to leave the building. It's super simple. It actually moves very quickly and there will be and are a lot of friendly faces to answer questions and, and help out. Great, that's perfect. Hey, you know, you mentioned earlier that we have Pfizer vaccine on hand now as of Monday. Um, do you have any sense that is that, do we have enough vaccine to vaccinate everyone who's gonna want it? Or is this gonna be like the old days where people had to get up early in the morning to, to wait and, and log into their computers? <laughs> I'm very happy to say it's not gonna be like the old days uh, that we experienced in, in January, February. Uh, those were tough times where people were really scrambling to get appointments because we had such limited supplies. One of the things about Pfizer is it comes in minimum shipping quantities of almost 1,200 doses. And we actually have about 900 kids in our entire county uh, between the ages of 12 and 17. So we anticipate there's going to be plenty of vaccine. And actually, we really want people to take advantage of the fact that we do have the vaccine in our county because it comes in such large quantities. We might not be able to order more for a while. Um, and that's because we want to make sure we're not wasting any vaccine. So the vaccine will be prioritized for kids seven, 12 to 17 because that's the only vaccine they can receive. But we are also opening up the uh, Pfizer vaccine clinics to the families of these kids. And if we have additional supplies left over, we will offer it to more adults. But really, our focus for these Pfizer clinics is to make sure kids have access to vaccine and aren't left behind. Okay, that's great. And I, I just want to highlight, I mean, you just said this, but if you're if you're thinking of getting your child vaccinated and they're between the ages of 12 and 15, this is your chance. I mean, these set of clinics that are coming up or when we want to see you, that's not to say there might not be some other options down the road. There may be, uh, but this is when we know it's going to happen and, and it's the easiest and best time to get it done. So I just think everyone, hopefully everyone walks away with that. Uh, that's kind of the last questions that I had uh, on concerns. Obviously, there are more out there and as people kind of reach out to us, maybe we'll do another one of these down the road. But Dr. James, any last thoughts or, or words you want to share? Yeah, Brendan, I, I would like to just say thank you to everybody. I couldn't be more proud of the way that the our community has handled this pandemic. It's a it's a huge, uh, huge challenge. People have stepped forward and done the right thing. Um, I know it hasn't been easy, and I know everyone um, hasn't hasn't agreed with everything that I've said or done. Uh, but hopefully, everyone knows that my strong, even my strongest critics, that the health of this community comes first uh, in everything that I do. And I'm not saying that uh, that I've been perfect. I haven't, but but I know that the recommendations and the actions that we take are really to keep people safe here. Um, I, I am not the slightest bit hesitant to challenge the status quo if that's what needs to happen. I think you all know that. Uh, mm -hmm. When it comes to vaccinating kids, I am totally on board. It's what we need to do right now. Kids are our biggest, at the most risk right now of anybody in our community. We've got great immunization rates about that, but kids are generally vulnerable to this. They're the ones whose lives have been impacted uh, most, most, most thoroughly by this, uh, three throughout their lives, schooling, playing, all those things have been impacted. Vaccine is an opportunity to get back to normal as soon as possible. And I think that's critically important for their mental health, their educational development, uh, and for the safety of them and their families. Um, it's, uh, you know, people have stepped up in a very remarkable way to keep our community safe. They've gotten immunized at, at some of the highest rates in the United States. Um, and I'm optimistic that same level of participation will happen with our children to keep everyone, including them, safe going forward. Great. And Ellen, any, anything last you want to say? 
Well, I'm with Frank. Just so much gratitude uh, for working in our community and, and how our community and public health staff have responded. Um, the importance of getting island kids vaccinated is, is the one piece that honestly still keeps me up at night uh, because they are at such risk and have been so vulnerable and have really, their lives have been deeply impacted. Uh, all of ours have, but kids especially. Uh, and I'm just, I'm super excited that we can start making this happen and that we're able to bring Pfizer to the community and, and start our vaccination efforts with our kids and for our kids. And I wanna encourage anyone who's watching who has questions about COVID vaccinations and whether that's the right decision for them to send an email to covidquestions at sanjuanco.com. And we'll respond either directly or we'll compile your questions for a future Q&A similar to this one, knowing that uh, this is these are these are questions the community has and we'll do our best to answer them and, and take our time with you to answer those questions. Great, perfect. I mean, thank you so much to both of you for for everything, uh, but taking the time to do this. I just want to highlight to everyone that the website that Ellen mentioned earlier, uh, www.sjccovid.com, uh, is where we're putting up our, our latest scheduling uh, for these upcoming clinics, and, and not just the Pfizer clinics, but ongoing Johnson & Johnson walk-up clinics for any adults who aren't vaccinated and want to come in and, and get the single shot. Um, and and it, as Ellen mentioned, it's a little bit in flux, uh, so keep an eye on that page, and hopefully we'll have the registration links open for these Pfizer clinics uh, maybe as soon as later today or, or most likely tomorrow, so keep an eye on that page. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in, uh, and thank you, Ellen and Frank. Uh, take care, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you.